Hi everyone, our subject today is fever in pediatrics. Introduction. The word fever is derived from the Latin fever mean to warm and commonly means an increase in body temperature. Although this general definition is acceptable in a common parallel, fever is described more accurately as an adaptive response of thermoregulation. It must be differentiated from hyperthermia, an increased body temperature resulting from conditions that overwhelm the normal process of thermoregulation. Normal rectal body temperature ranged between 36.1 Celsius and 37.8 Celsius, although on rare occasion it may be as low as 35.3 Celsius or as high as 38.3 Celsius. The normal temperature of 37 was derived from an 1868 study of more than 1 million auxiliary temperatures taken in adults. This value may have no relevance for children, not only because adults wear studies, but also because auxiliary and rectal temperature correlate poorly. Young children seem to have higher body temperature than adults, with the temperatures slightly higher than 37.8 Celsius, occurring commonly in those younger than 2 years. In a neonate and infant less than 3 months, it is safest to consider rectal temperature 38 Celsius as an abnormal, which is fever. In patient more than three months of age, the first step is to reliable document fever by measuring axillary temperature using digital thermometer. Use of oral and rectal route is uh, not recommended. Temperature above 38 is uh, considered as fever. Lowest body temperature occur between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m and highest ones occur between 5 p.m. and 7 p.m., a diurnal variation that persists even during febrile illness. Assessing danger sign in febrile children, A, B, C, A for arousal, alertness, activity, B for breathing difficulty, C, color changes and circulation, D for decreased intake and urine output. History. Onset, high fever from the very onset usually suggests viral infection, malaria, or localized bacterial infection at the site of entry of organism, tonsillitis, UTI. Duration, persistent fever beyond day three without localizing sign, call for laboratory test. Progress, a gradual improving fever by day three or four suggests self-limiting viral infection while bacterial infection peak by day three or four. Interfebrile state, children suffering from viral infection or malaria appear normal between fever spikes. If the child continues to appear sick even between fever spikes, the cause is likely to be bacterial infection. Response to antibiotic, poor response to optimum dose of paracetamol or ibuprofen may suggest severe bacterial infection. A combined symptom, bacterial infection usually present with a localization to a part of system such as tonsillitis or pneumonia, while viral infection usually affects the entire system or multiple systems such as respiratory and gastrointestinal system. Contact with similar illnesses, family, uh, family member with a similar illness suggests airborne viral infection. Past history of infective focus, device, shunt, implant, underlying anomaly, congenital heart disease, uh, visceroureteral reflex, predisposed to early complication and need urgent evaluation. Examination, appearance. Well or sick based on alertness, interaction, tone, cry, activity, and look. Lack of alertness indicate encephalopathy and underlying serious illness. Breathing, normal or abnormal, apnea, type of breathing, rate and work of breathing, breathing difficulty with the altered sensorium indicate serious illness. Color, 
pink color of extremities is assuring mottling cyanosis and ashen complexion indicate serious illness temperature degree and severity heart rate proportionate or disproportionate to temperature hydration assess the sensorium skin turgor eyes mucous membrane and urine pattern common causes of fever fever with a localization less than seven days if there is watery nasal discharge, most likely viral upper respiratory tract infection. If there is perulent nasal discharge, follicles, exudate on tonsil, petechia on palate, could be bacterial upper respiratory tract infection. Tachypnea and chest sign could be pneumonia. Watery stool, viral acute gastroenteritis. Blood mucus in stool, tenesmas could be bacterial acute gastroenteritis. Urinary compliance could be a UTI, urinary tract infection. Hepatosplenomegaly could be malaria, typhoid, hepatitis, or infectious mononucleosis. Pointer to serious bacterial infection in a febrile child. Fast respiration, more than 60 per minute. Chest and drawing, grunting, could be pneumonia. Next stiffness, bulging fontanelle, decreased level of conscience. Convulsive status epilepticus could be meningitis. Unexplained vomiting, poor feeding, lethargy, irritability, abdominal pain, or tenderness, urinary frequency, or dysuria, urinary tract infection, disproportionate tachycardia, cold extremity, prolonged capillary refills more than three seconds. Core axillary mismatch, altered sensorium, oliguria suggests systemic inflammatory response causing shock, septicemia. Non-blanching rash, particularly with one or more of the following. An ill-looking child, lesion larger than 2 mm in diameter, purpura, capillary refill time more than or equal to 3 seconds, and neck stiffness. This is meningococcemia. Swelling of a limb or joint, not using an extremity, non-weight bearing, this is septic arthritis or osteomyelitis. Red flag. At time, non-infective causes do not present with a short duration fever and one should have a high index of suspicion for them, like Kawasaki disease or leukemia. No combination of clinical assessment and diagnostic test will successfully identify all patients who have serious infection at the time of initial presentation. Therefore, the importance of timely reassessment with a good history, systemic confident clinical examination, and the intelligent use of laboratory tests, a rational approach cannot be over, uh, overemphasized. Investigation must be done on all sick children and in those without localization by 72 hours. Complete blood count, a white BC count of greater than 15,000 or less than 5,000, a band to neutrophil ratio more than or equal to 0.2 is considered abnormal. An abnormality is a relatively poor surrogate marker for bacteremia. Urine analysis, dipstick, urinary analysis, microscopy, gram stain, culture must be considered in presence of fever without localization, particularly in younger children or when UTI is suspected. A urine dipstick test positive for nitrate or leukocyte esterase or a finding of greater than 10 white VC per high power field or organism seen on a gram stain is considered abnormal. Chest X-ray is useful in children with a respiratory localization. Chest film should be considered in an infant with the unexplained white PC count of greater than 20,000 or with prolonged fever or cough. In children with no definitive diagnosis beyond day 3 or where antibiotic is to be initiated, blood culture must be done. It is gold standard for the diagnosis of bacterial infection. CSF examination, cytology, gram stain, and culture 
is mandatory in every suspected case of meningitis and also in all sick infant without localization. CSF fluid with a greater than 8 white BC or organism on gram stain is considered abnormal. Interpretation of complete blood count. In cases of acute bacterial infection, there is an increase in total white BC, especially polymorphs. In systemic infection, an increase also in total white BC, polymorphs, and uh, platelet will be elevated. Leukemia, there will be low hemoglobin, elevated total white BC, lymphocyte, and low platelet. Acute viral infection, uh, nothing specific, mild elevation, uh, white BC, polymorphs. Typhoid, there will be decreased in uh, total white BC count. Malaria, low hemoglobin and low platelet. Capillary leak, high hemoglobin, uh, mild elevation, total white BC, lymphocyte and low platelet. Tuberculosis, chronic infection, uh, mild elevation, white BC, lymphocytes. Indication for hospitalization. Any febrile neonate, toxic child, presence of danger sign, admission for period of observation, pre-existing medical problem like congenital heart defect, immune deficiency, malnutrition, parental preference. Fever in a newborn uh, below 30 days of age, Physical examination has marked limitation to predict acutely, accurately a serious infection in a unit. All febrile newborns should be screened for complete blood count, CSF study, and for culture of urine and blood. X-ray of chest should be done if a respiratory cause is suspected. Febrile unit should be hospitalized regardless of the result of laboratory studies and given intravenous antibiotic till infection is ruled out. Clinical peers. Uncommon manifestation of common disease are more likely than are rare disease. A clues to the diagnosis are frequently present in the history and physical examination, but are not elicited or unappreciated. Therefore, th thoroughness and repetitive are visually important. All febrile children should have periodic assessment for danger sign. Presence of these should lead to proper investigation. Fever without focus in a well child should be treated symptomatically on outpatient department basis. Such children should be periodically evaluated. Empiric antibiotic should be avoided. The emphasis should be on the child and not the, his temperature. Management of febrile child, supportive treatment, supportive treatment of fever, symptomatic, not all fever need treatment. Primary goal of treating febrile child should be to improve the child overall comfort rather than focus on normalization of body temperature. Cooling involves nursing in cool environment and unbundling the child. Sponging is reserved for patient with the hyperthermia temperature more than 38.5 CA uh, Celsius after 30 minutes of antibiotic dose. Antibiotic, the use of antibiotic should be individualized and based on the child will appearing, not temperature alone. Antibiotic should be used as therapy for fever rather than control. Treatment for fever with the antibiotic is indicated if the child has discomfort like irritability, drowsy, greater than 40 Celsius, pain, or excessive crying. Both paracetamol and ibuprofen are effective antibiotics. Hydration should be ensured for all febrile children by increasing oral intake as for every one Celsius rise in temperature, the fluid requirement increased by 10%. Empiric treatment with the, is uh, not uh, routinely recommended. It uh, is justified only in toxic children and in unit and that uh, to 
only after sending a relevant investigation. It is directed toward the probable underlying cause of illness and most probable organisms. Thank you for your listening.